by the end of this video, you will have your Unity project set up for VR development using the Oculus Integration SDK and you'll also have a build ready which you can test it out on your device. So let's get started. Hey what's up this is Ashish from Immersive Insiders and this video is broken down into 4 parts. First we'll see how to create a new project and import the Oculus Integration SDK. Second we'll see how to set up our project for VR development. Third we'll be seeing how to set up our scene for VR. And finally, we'll be building a sample scene and testing it out on our device. So let's begin. Alright, so before we create a new project, you'll have to go to installs tab and make sure that you have the latest Unity editor installed. So for me, it's 2021.3.6 F1 LTS version. And then you'll have to go to settings, click on add modules. And in here, you got to make sure that you have the Android build support, Android SDK and NDK tools and OpenJDK tools installed as well. So once you have all these uh, editor and the uh, modules installed, you can go to projects, click on new project and here from the editor version, make sure you have selected the latest version and let us select the 3D core render pipeline. Now you might be wondering that why can't we choose 3D URP and that's because the Oculus integration that comes, the SDK, the assets that are there are meant for 3D core and not for URP. If you try using URP, then you might get the pink shaders. So I would say for now you can stick with uh, 3D render pipeline and then let's give our project a name we'll call it as VR base project and click on create project now this is going to take a couple of minutes to open so I'll see you once that's done all right so we have the unity editor open now we can go ahead and download and install the oculus integration SDK now there are two ways we can do it now the first one is by going to the oculus uh, official website I'll leave a link for this in the description and in here you need to make sure you have selected the latest uh, version that is 42 and click on download uh, check this mark and let's say download now this will take a couple of minutes so in the meanwhile I'll show you the second method and that is by going to the unity asset store so once you're in the unity asset store you can just search for oculus integration and that should uh, show you this oculus integration page and in here you can click on open in unity and open unity editor now this will uh, take you to the unity editor and it will open the package manager window and in here it will select the oculus uh, integration package now here you will have an option to download it first now since i've already downloaded i have an option called import and re-download but you might not have that so once you download it you can go ahead and click on import okay so once you click on import you will have the import unity package window pop up and here, here you can see all the assets and that are there that comes along with the package and all we need to do is click on import now this is going to take a couple of minutes so i'll see you once that's done so while importing you will receive a couple of pop-ups now the first one is saying that there is a new ovr plugin detected and do we want to use it we will click on yes and then uh, it'll ask us if we want to use the openxr as a backend so we'll click on use openxr and click on ok then uh, for it for it to work properly we'll have to restart so we'll click on restart as well and uh, so there have been couple of deprecated sdk so if you are using an older version first and if you are upgrading it to the latest version then there might be some issue and if you are doing this for the first time then you might not get this pop-up and uh, so we'll just go ahead and click on show assets that are there and we'll delete the recommended assets now we can finally say upgrade and click on restart again so once the unity editor restarts you can go ahead and close the package manager window and in the assets folder you will be able to find a folder called oculus now this will have all the prefabs components scripts that you'll be requiring to build an application for your oculus headset so which means that we have successfully imported the sdk and now if you're wondering if you uh, how to import it if you are downloaded from the official website then don't worry all you have to do is go to assets click on import package click on custom package Go to the file location where you have downloaded it, click on that and then click on open package and the rest of the process remains the same. So with that we have uh, successfully downloaded the Oculus integration SDK. Now let's see how to set up our project. Now to set up our project, we'll have to go to file, build settings and the first thing to do here is to switch the platform to Android. So we'll click on Android and say switch platform. Once that's done, you can click on player settings and first we'll change the company name. We'll call it as uh, Immersive Insiders, that is Imin. And we'll scroll down. All right, we'll have to check on override default package name. You can check on this. And we need to have the minimum API level set to Android 10, that is level 29. We'll have to change the scripting backend to IL to CPP and uh, we'll have to check the ARM64. Once that's done, you'll have to click on XR plugin management and click on XR plugin management. Now this will install the plugin that's there. And once that's done, we can install the Oculus plugin. 
Now all we have to do is go ahead and uh, check this marks for Oculus. Now this will install the Oculus plugin as well. Now say suppose you want to test your scene just by hitting the Unity play button. So if that is the case then you'll have to go to the PC tab and in here you'll have to check the Oculus plugin as well. So with that you'll be able to easily press play and test it out on your headset. Now we can go ahead and uh, close these tabs and with that we have uh, set up our project for VR development. Now we'll set up our scene. Alright, so to be honest, I don't really like the default skybox that comes along with Unity. So we'll go ahead and change that first. To change the skybox, you need to click on Windows, Rendering, Lighting, and then click on Environment tab. Now here you'll be able to find the skybox material. And let's go ahead and change it to something called as skybox gradient. Now this skybox comes along with the Oculus uh, integration SDK. Now if you want to use, uh, feel free to use any other uh, skybox of your choice. Now once that's done, we'll add a nice room environment as well. So in the project uh, window, you can search for room environment. There we go. So this one over here. Now this again comes along with the Oculus integration SDK. If you want, you can have a room environment of your choice as well. Now once that's done, we'll get rid of the main camera and let, the, let us now search for the Oculus interaction sample rig. There we go. So this one, the in Oculus Interaction Sample Rig, you can select that and drag and drop it into your hierarchy. So we have like a basic scene setup. So we have changed our skybox, we have a room environment and we have our Oculus Sample Rig. Now we'll quickly have a look at the components that are there in the Sample Rig. So if I select it and open its children, we have uh, two children. One is the OVR Sample Rig and Input OVR. So the camera rig has the OVR manager. So now this is the important component that we need to know. And that's because if we scroll down, we have uh, different configurations that we can have. For example, hand tracking support, we can have either just controllers or controllers hands or hands only. And then if we want to make use of pass through, then we'll have to have the pass through capabilities checked. So basically this component manages uh, all the things that are uh, related to the headset and like the flow tracking as well. And then if I open the camera rig, we have the tracking space and inside that we have the left camera, center camera, right camera. And then we have a tracking anchor which does not have any component. And finally we have the left hand anchor which has the left hand anchor controller and then we have the OVR controller prefab. Now this has an OVR controller helper and it has different models. So what this component basically does is based on which Oculus device you're using. So if you're using a Quest 2, uh, the Quest 2 model gets shown in your uh, scene. So if you're using a, a Rift S or Quest, then a different controller is seen. So uh, let us quickly have a look at that. So if I open this here and if we have a look at its mesh here, you can see that we have the Quest controller. And then similarly, if you want to see the touch controller, we can go ahead and see that one as well. Yeah, here you can see the model of the touch controller. So basically what this uh, component does is the helper, uh, it, it detects automatically which device you're using and it renders that model. All right, so that's the same thing with uh, right hand as well. And then we have another component which is called as uh, left OVR hand. So now this you can use it like a hand model. Now instead of having the controller model, you will have like a hand model, that's it. All right, so that's with OVR camera rig. Now let's check out the input OVR. So here it's taking the reference of uh, which camera rig it is taking and then it uh, it's tracking the world transform and inside here we have three children one is the head mounted display so this has like the all the data source so this component has all the information about your head mounted display your position rotation and if it is moving forward and all those things and then we have the controllers so controller has again left controller and right controller so the left controller has the controller script and the active state and then we have the controller interactors so inside the controller interactors, by default, we just have the poke interactor, which means you'll be able to poke at objects. Now there are two more types of interaction. One is grab interaction and ray interaction. So later on uh, in the future, you'll see how to add the grab interaction and poke interaction in here. But basically these are meant to interact with uh, different objects in your VR environment. So the controller interactor has interactor groups. So right now you can see that there's just a poke interactor, but as and when you add more interactions, you'll have to put it in here as well. And uh, then we have the controller data source. So now this component has all the data of your controllers, like its position, rotation, its speed, and all the, all the data pertaining to the controller. And uh, similarly for the right controller as well. And when we talk about the hands, so now again, um, Oculus has two types of input. One is using the controller and one is using our physical hands. We have hand detection. So once your hand gets detected, all the data source, uh, all the data with respect to that hand is captured in this particular component. And then we have the left hand visual. So for example, if I show you how it looks like, there we go. 
and here we have so this is our hand so this model gets mapped to our hand so when we uh, close or when we open our hand or make certain poses it gets animated automatically so the, the left hand visual takes care of that and then we have the left hand features so there's something called as finger feature transform features so now oculus detects your hand and its position based on features so there's something called as curl flexion and uh, abduction and all these kind of things um, to that if you want to know don't worry i'll leave a link for that in the description you can have a look at it and we have the hand tractor left hand now this is similar to the controllers wherein with the hand as well you can poke grab and have brain traction so the interactors come over here and that's similar to the right hand as well so with that we have set up our scene now we'll uh, test it from unity and we'll build and test it on our headset as well Alright, so before we can actually test this out, you need to make sure that your device is connected to your machine using the link cable or using AirLink. Now, if you're not sure how that's done, then you should definitely check out this video over here. And once your device is connected, all you need to do is uh, press the play button and let us test this out. Okay, so here I can see my uh, room environment and here my controllers are detected as well. Now, these buttons and the joysticks are animated, so it's really cool. And uh, now if I keep my controllers down, and just wait for my hands to get detected here you can see that my hands are detected and uh, we can use hands as an input method as well and now let's exit the play mode so now that we know that we can uh, test it directly from unity now let's build and see if it works on our headset as well so before you can build it onto your device you need to make sure that you have a developer's account and you need to have enabled the developer option on your device now if you're not sure how that's done then i will leave a link for that in the description and once that's done you need to connect your device using the link cable and then you'll have to go to file click on build settings now there's a small chain that we'll have to do you need to go to player settings and in here you need to change the color space from gamma to linear now it will give you a pop-up warning saying that it might take some amount of time uh, but that's all right we need to change it to linear because uh, openvr backend works only with uh, linear rendering uh, or else it will not work now once that's done you can close this and make sure you have added your open scene click on build and run and let's create a new folder and let's call it as builds and inside here i'll name my application as test1 and click on save uh, it's saying that i have not saved the unity scene so we'll uh, save the scene and i will see you once it's done building all right so the application has been successfully built it took about five minutes and once that's done it automatically la launches onto your headset and here you can see that i can see my room environment and my controllers they track perfectly fine my head tracking works perfectly fine as well now if i try to keep my controllers down and let's wait for my hands to get detected it does not get detected and this is exactly why it's really important for us to not only test it in our unity scene but also build and test it on our headset i'll show you exactly why it's not working on our uh, headset right now all right so here we are in unity now let us select the sample rig open as children select the ovr camera rig now the ovr manager component has an option called as uh, hand tracking support controllers only now we'll select this and select controllers and hand now this was the setting that's the reason behind for us to not see hand tracking when we build it now when we tested it was seen but when you build it it was not and this is the reason behind it so now we'll go ahead and click on file build settings and we'll say build and run once again well this time we'll call it as uh, test 2 click on save and i will see you once it's done building all right so the second application has been built successfully as well and now let's check if our hand tracking works so here you can see our hand tracking is working and let me grab the controllers and the controllers works perfectly fine as well and now let's check once again for hand tracking there we go so now you know that uh, the build works perfectly fine and the project has been successfully set up for VR development. Alright, with that you have your Unity project set up for VR development using the Oculus Integration SDK. Now if you feel that this video has helped you, then I'd highly appreciate it if you can leave a like and subscribe as well. By the way, we have a free ebook linked in the description which talks about the biggest mistakes you could make as an aspiring XR developer. Now this will give you a huge advantage over others, so you should definitely check it out. In the next video, we'll talk about the locomotion system and see how we can move in our VR environment. And as usual, I will see you in the next one.